Cooking with the sun is loads of fun, especially when you can cook for your whole family without the use of electricity, gas, fire, etc. Today, we are super blessed to have a short meet and greet with Nuno Oliveira Martins, founder and general manager of Sun OK in Lisbon, Portugal. Sun OK manufactures the Sun Taste solar oven and other fancy solar products. So without further ado, let me pass this time to Nuno. I don't know how many of you know cork. Here in Portugal, it's a very uh, common material because uh, although we are a very small country, uh, we are the largest producer of cork worldwide. It comes from a tree that grows only in the shores of the Mediterranean and in some shores of the Mediterranean, Western Mediterranean, and in the plains of Portugal. It's quite a natural material in all senses to, to, uh, to, for us to work with. I started playing around with, uh, with cork and making some experiments. Cork is not the kind of material that engineers are used to use because uh, we use metals, plastics, that can be rigorously uh, cut and dimensions. That's not the case with cork, which is a natural material. It, it dilates, it, uh, it, uh, it shrinks with, uh, with temperature. It is affected by water. Uh, that, that's a lot of effects that uh, do, are not pleasing for engineers who like to design things in a rigorous manner. But from the first moment I started to playing around with, with cork, I, I could see that the characteristics of this material are exceptional and that we could do, there was a lot we could do with it. And uh, so it's how we evolved into the Sun Tastes, which is a solar oven working like a greenhouse where you place your food inside and when placed under sunshine, uh, it will heat your food up to the point where it cooks. And this is it. Uh, let me adjust the screen so that, can you see that? So this is like a box. Let's conceal my face and can you see it now? Yes. I think so. Okay. So this is a box and it has a lid on the top and you can see here there's a glass. So this glass allows the sun's rays to, to pass inside and to heat up the interior. There is a mirror on the on the leads on the bottom face of the leads that will reflect even more uh, sun rays into the into the interior of the oven and this is a, the principle of work so when stored you will keep it like this when working you will open the leads and you will adjust the angle up to the point where all of the reflection fits in the um, in the glass it's very easy and uh, if it's not well adjusted, you will see the reflection outside of the oven on the ground around it. Uh, so that means we are losing energy. In this model, we have a rotating point here. In this model, we opted for a back door. On the previous model, we had the, the glass was opening. This time we decided to do it like this. So now you can see the interior of the oven. I will open a bit. Okay. So the, the walls, they are all mirrored. The four walls, they are mirrored on, on the back. Uh, it's the same thing. The door, the back door is mirrored. And these mirrors, they have a curved shape that you can see here. They have been studied and, and defined by a, a physicist that so that all of the incoming rays are directed into the bottom plates. If they were flat mirrors, there would always be some reflections outside and we would be losing some energy. So this allows for a very high efficiency of this oven. After capturing the rays entering through the glass, they are all directed into the bottom plates. I will take it out. This is the bottom plate, it's a, it's a, a plate of aluminum. It's black, completely black. This is, uh, the, there is no paint, it's, it's an anodized, which is a surface treatment 
that renders aluminum black or other colors. Black is the most suitable here because the black color absorbs light and it will heat up the interior, the interior of the oven. And uh, by taking all of the bottom surface, it will do that in a very homogeneous way, meaning that the temperature inside is very homogeneous, unlike temperatures in, uh, in electrical or gas ovens, where the flame or the resistance has a very much higher temperature than other, other parts, and meaning that your food will cook in a much more gentler and, and homogeneous way, uh, rendering it more tasteful and uh, more juicier and also tender in the case of, of meat or, or fish. I will adjust it in position. This plate can be taken out for cleaning purposes. If one spills something inside, it's useful to, um, to take it out. So this is the sun taste. I will close it on again. There are two swiveling locks because we which, which were not on the initial design, but uh, when we did the first testing, uh, when temperature rises inside, the, the pressure builds up and the door tended to open. So we had to put this, which I don't particularly like, but they are necessary. So this is our product. We have been selling it for five years. The first years, um, it was very barely known. For the past three years, uh, sales have been picking up and it has been very encouraging, mostly in Europe, some in Australia, New Zealand, the uh, United States also, and now looking for, for Asia. I don't know whether you have any questions, I, I'm available to reply to them. One of the gentlemen here was asking earlier, is it possible to carry this on a plane? Yes, it is possible. You have to pack it because we, we all know how how luggage in planes is uh, treated. One way would be to use the is standard package. We have been improving it. It comes inside a carton and with a foam enveloping it. But you might find other ways to, to pack it uh, perfectly reasonable. We say that this is transportable, but this is not a portable item, okay? It's not very heavy, but it's um, quite somehow big and, and not very practical to, to carry around. But it's possible, yes. No, no. No problem with that. I've done that, traveling to trade shows and so on. Uh, some of them, you saw the bottom plate, which almost never suffers any damage, but uh, but it can be replaced. The back door, it's also detachable. But all the other parts, they are glued together in order to guarantee that the oven is well insulated and that is no, there is no air escaping the interior. Yeah, it looks pretty robust. Just by the looks of it, I actually thought from the first view that I got from the pictures, I thought that the sides were actually thinner. Now that I'm looking at it, it's quite sizably thick. Yes, cork is a fantastic material. Cork is the bark of the cork oak tree, uh, one tree that grows in the, in the zones I, I've told you about in the Mediterranean. It, for, it has been used for centuries. I think Romans, I think Romans and uh, other ancient peoples uh, used it to make sandals for the feet. Uh, it's very soft, but very resistant also. And uh, it's a very good thermal insulator. Uh, noise insulator, by the way, also, although that's, that, that doesn't play any role in the, in the sun test. And, and I think that its use became familiar worldwide because of wine stoppers. Everybody knows it from wine stoppers, okay? And some of the largest producers are located here in Portugal. And uh, they had a problem because uh, cork comes in, uh, in layers from the tree. Uh, and I forgot to say that uh, it's taken out from the tree without damaging it. You don't have to cut the tree to, to have the cork, okay? This is only the bark. So you take it out. There's a picture in the presentation I, I sent you. That's a, sure that. a specialty a specialty profession here is, is to take the, the, the bark out of the cork hook. And, uh, and so in, in fact, it enhances the health of the tree. It should be taken out every nine years and, uh, and the trees grow up more in a more healthy fashion when uh, submitted to that procedure every nine years. And the, the producers of wine stoppers, they had a problem because 
Uh, wine stoppers, they are cylindrical. The bark comes in plates. They, uh, when extracting the cylinders, they would be left with some uh, remainings of, of cork. And they started mowing that and making a cork agglomerate, okay? So what we use here, although I'm referring to it simplistically as cork, is in fact agglomerated cork. So it's small grains of cork, different sizes, which are put together with a resin, which makes for, for very, very resistant parts, which are these ones. As you said, it's, very, it's quite thick. That's because half of the thickness, this is double the thickness of these walls. And we have to double it because uh, half of the thickness is used to, to fit these, these central elements, the front, the glasses, and the bottom, and so on, into the, into the core. Then they are glued together and it's very, it's very stiff, very strong. Yes, it is. That's very fascinating. I've always been fascinated with cork. Sometimes we are so familiar with cork boards for bulletin boards and things like that. And then like Birkenstocks and all that, you know? Yes. Yeah. So I was so fascinated when I saw that video for the first time by Alan on your website. Yes, that's a customer of ours in uh, the United States. Yeah. So when I heard it's made of cork, I'm like, Wow, that's fascinating. So now I know it's a resin uh, cork. Yeah. Yes, it's it's um, a cork grains. We use very small cork grains because the smaller, the more resistance the part will be and put together with a resin. That is great. Anybody has any questions that you would like to ask? Yeah. Uh, lifespan of this uh, solar unit. Uh. The lifespan is something we have not yet determined. But um, it can last for a lifetime. The materials in on the oven are glass, which lasts forever. Aluminum, very resistant. The mirrors, they are also aluminum, so they are unbreakable. They will age by losing the brightness, but that doesn't impair their function, OK? They are the first ovens we made, uh, the Sun Cook I told you about, uh, they were made in 2003, so 20 years ago, and they are still working. The, um, there's no brilliance, no reflectivity. Uh, you cannot see your image on it, but they are still working. So the mirrors will, will go on for, for decades uh, also. The cork is a very, very resistant material. Uh, that's why trees get covered with it, but uh, it has some fragility also. So it will all depends on the use you make of it, okay? And cork, being a natural material, it will absorb water, okay? So it shouldn't be exposed. If one day it rains, it's not a problem, but if it's continuously exposed to, uh, to water, uh, then uh, cork will start uh, dilating a bit, okay? Absorbing some water. And what happens is that when the different parts of cork join themselves, they will start dilating apart, and and and, uh, and in the end, the oven will be uh, completely. Um, uh, there there will be openings here, and then you won't be able to to heat it up. So we had two cases in, in three thousand. We had two cases of persons that left it uh, the whole year. I would say that if you are careful enough, if you don't drag the oven, uh, abrasion is not good for it. If you always place it in in a table not on the floor where small stones and dust might uh, hurt the, the surface. It can outlast any one of us, I think. Oh, um, we have to expose to the sun for how many hours before we can use oh, it? That, yes, this is an usual question. So this is slow cooking, okay? When I told you that food ends up being more tasteful here and, and, uh, and the juicier, that is because Temperatures are lower, okay, oh, and they take longer to build up. So this is this is a case of slow cooking with all the advantages that has, and with the disadvantages it has, which okay. is it takes more time. To be on the safe side, we always say that this takes twice as long time as long uh, as as normal cooking methods. So say that you are cooking some rice in your oven and uh, for half an hour. You can count on one hour on this one, okay? Right. That's already a good measure of it. And, and people normally are uh, relieved to know that because 
In Portugal, there's a very traditional dish um, made using uh, geothermal energy in the, um, not in the mainland, but in the Azores islands in the Atlantic. Uh, they have some geothermal heat uh, source, and uh, but they have to bury the food at six o'clock in the morning in order to have lunch at one o'clock uh, in the evening. So they are afraid that it's something like that. No, nothing like that. It's at worst, it's, it's twice as long, okay? Normally, in Portugal, it takes about 50% more. It depends whether you are on in winter or summer. It, it's, that's relevant, okay? In winter, I would say close to twice. In summer, it might take 20% more. But it, it also depends on solar radiation, how much sunshine are you getting. It depends on the amount of food. It's sensible to that. It depends on the kind of food. If you are cooking food or meat, uh, meat or fish or, or bread, for instance, or a cake, uh, it goes quite, quite nicely and uh, a bit longer than the normal methods. But if you cook uh, something more dense like beans or potatoes, then it will take longer. But, 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 but as a rule, two times as long as normal cooking methods is, is a good measure. What is the temperature, the average temperature? Yes, the temperature uh, here at the maximum, we recorded 165 Celsius on, um, on a testing uh, season we, we made here in Portugal. That was already in fall, the end of September, so not the ideal period to do that. But, um, but the theoretical figure is um, 200 degrees Celsius, okay? This has been attained by one customer. One customer has wanted to test it and, and they did that. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it forgot to, um, to take the pot out of the oven. I forgot to mention that the, uh, the oven is sold with a pot and a, and a pan. And they forgot to take it out. Uh, so we melted the, the handles on the pot. But that's not the intended use. So this is, this is, these are figures that are attainable with no food inside, okay? I would say that being so close to the equator, you will be very, it will be very easy for you to attain the 200 degrees Celsius, maybe even surpass a little bit. You, you will tell me afterwards when you start testing with it. This is a, a theoretical figure, okay? The practical figure, when you have food inside, what happens is that food always has some water inside. And when water starts boiling, it consumes a lot of energy, and that has an effect of stabilizing the temperature. Your temperature grows up until boiling point, till 100 degrees Celsius, and then it starts abating, and it will stabilize at about 120. So if you put a thermometer inside the oven, that's what you will see. It will cook at 120, 130, uh, no more than that, okay? I see. So this um, unit that is no storage energy. No storage. That's it. We have made some experiments with lava stones from Vulcans to place it inside in order to store energy and to be able to cook at night. But that renders the oven so heavy. <laughs> one, one lava stone for this will take quite a lot of, of space uh, in height and it makes it so heavy that we felt it wasn't practical. So, um, so it doesn't store indeed. What we recommend is for people to preheat the oven. There's a little bit of storage there, but that's only to accelerate the cooking. So when people start preparing the food, they should immediately place the oven outside and uh, adjust it to the sun so that it eats up inside and that will accelerate a little bit the cooking. But there's no storage to okay. reply to you. Okay, that okay? means we, we have to cook under the hot sun and not to... I thought that we're supposed to place the oven on the sun, like it absorb the energy and, and cook it indoor. So which means that we have to cook it up, I know. up the, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. You need to place it outside. <laughs> so, yes. okay. So you take how, okay. how, how long to, for it to heat it up? Oh, Immediate? for preheating, I would say 15 to 30 minutes. It's while, while you are preparing your food, uh, you oh, can leave it just, outside. 
I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Not yeah. not a worry. Uh, not, not nothing to worry about. But uh, but uh, you can profit from that time to um, to heat up the the internals of the oven. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one other thing I didn't mention, which is related to this, when we and which is a big advantage of the sun taste, is that it never burns the foods. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, by by cooking with gentle temperatures. Yeah. That means it never burns. So. You can leave it outside and go away to perform other tasks and get back when you want, not when you need. I always say that uh, in summer, I go to the beach uh, in the evening normally, and, and then I only come back when sun sets. And I always leave the dinner cooking here. Uh, no worries, uh, I can come back whenever I want. And uh, when I get back, it's warm, it's it's cooked and ready to, to eat. Okay. So that's part of the appeal of this. Um, oh. So there's no timer, there's not, no time, nothing, there's no... Uh... No, no. <laughs> no timer, no, no timer. worries. Yeah. It's set right. it and forget it. Okay, thank you so much okay. for, your, for your explanation. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Is your oven waterproof? Because sometimes you bake outside the uh, hot, uh, suddenly it rains, uh, often rains, you see. Huh? <laughs> so, so when you it, leave outside, it's waterproof. Man, right? Is it waterproof? It is waterproof, but ah, okay. it's not intended. It, it can it can withstand an accidental rain, okay? All right. But it okay. shouldn't be left outside when raining because. With time, cork will absorb the water and, and uh, it will um, dilate and, and it will damage the oven, okay? In the end. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not an immediate loss, but, but if, you, if, if it uh, keeps being submitted to rain, it, 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 will, uh, it will damage the oven, yes. Okay? okay. Now, question is, uh, can you bake bread with this oven? Yes, yeah. no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, sometimes okay. people ask that because... Uh, many people are used to cook bread at 200 Celsius. And yeah. uh, as I told you, this cooks at 120, but it make, makes bread with no no problem, no limitations on that. Yes. Does it brown? Does it brown? Uh, the, the yes, bread, it, it brown? is brown. It will be very color. brown in Malaysia, I'm sure. That <laughs> it, it gets brown in, here in Portugal. Um, and what's more, because of the gentle temperatures, the, the lower temperatures, the bread will not be as dry as usual. So. You will eat it up, and your mm. mouth won't become as dry as uh, you are used to. You, you will oh, feel okay. the difference. You will feel Thank the you. difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, oh, great, great. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, hello, no, no. Hello, Mary. Yeah, we got friends in Portugal, and uh, we wonder uh, what is the cost like to buy from Portugal. Oh, to buy from Portugal. We had a, quite a price hike last year because, you know, materials have been going up through the roof uh, and inflation and so on. So in Portugal, we are selling, we have two models. I didn't told you about that. Uh, this is a smaller one. It cooks for three to four persons. And we are selling this model in Europe for 419 uh, euros. 419, okay? The larger model which is able to cook to, um, for five to six persons. And it's 14 centimeters uh, wider than this one in this dimension. All the remaining dimensions are identical. Uh, it's selling for 499 euros. It's 419 or 499, different of the size, right? It's, it's uh, 419 for the smaller, this one, and 499 for the bigger one, okay? Both okay. figures are correct. We call okay. them, we call them the the large, the sun taste large, which is the the bigger one, and the sun taste compact, which is a smaller one. Yeah, um, we still do not know um, what the pricing will be like for the um, customs and things like that, and then there's all yep. the other logistics to deal with. So we are still having to deal with all that stuff before we can give, give a concrete price. I'll actually uh, show you in a little while the communication between um, Nuno and myself um, in the beginning, and then we'll show you how much we have been able to reduce um, from the initial cost. So you'll have an idea, but thankfully it will be even lower than that, but I don't know the final cost yet. 
because of the fact we don't know what the customs offices are going to charge us and the shipping uh, the, the... Uh, no no this is for nothing it's based on light or the heat if it it's sometimes um it's very hot and then the sun is very bright that's okay i, I understand but when there's no light uh, when it's a uh, cloudy but it's still very hot it's still we still humid so heat, does the heat still go through Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. The sun test uses infrared radiation, which is the radiation that doesn't go through clouds, okay? Mm. This is heat you feel in your skin mm. when the sun is, is shining. If it's cloudy but very hot, uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't. the outside temperature is not relevant for the sun test, okay? In the limits, I would say that is not very favorable in, in Malaysia because of those cloudy days. Mm. But in the limits, you can cook with outside negative temperatures if the sun is shining, okay? There's, um, there's people cooking in the Himalayas with this. Oh. Snow everywhere and, oh. uh, and the sun tastes cooking, okay? okay? Because it's very well insulated, so not, not very, the outside temperature is not very relevant. All right. But it's a clear blue sky. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. That means it will heat up a little, but but not so much. Okay. Um, you might be able to cook with some clouds, but uh, not not uh, not as normal. But maybe okay? you can warm up food for warming. Oh okay. yes, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. For warming food, it's okay. So like. Only but if you need to cook it in order to kill the, the bacteria and the germs and so on, uh, then, then it will it wouldn't be safe. But for warming, it's okay, yes. Warming, like from the fridge, I don't know whether it, it, it does it work. I would say it's always a matter of how long do you want it to cook. It happened to me once that we, uh, in summer, I have four daughters and uh, things are quite busy uh, most of the time. And uh, once before going to the beach, uh, we forgot to uh, take dinner out and prepare something. Mm -hmm. And we were in the car when we reminded, we recalled that we had to place every, something in the oven for, for dinner. So I took a turkey's leg wow. uh, from the, the refrigerator, from the freezer. Okay. It was, com it was ice cold. It was completely solid. And I threw it inside the oven with, with some uh, olive oil and so on. And we went away to the beach. And when we came back, it was cooked. But wow. it was there for a long time. I don't know, maybe uh, four hours, six hours, perhaps. But it can cook uh, from below freezing point. Yes, but it takes longer, of course. The ideal would be to, to let food unfreeze <clears throat> and then uh, cook it inside. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> okay. Mm. The, the best part about uh, solar cookers is that it, the way of cooking is quite different from conventional cooking because like when you bake bread, the bread browns on the top. But in this case, it browns more at the bottom than the top. Oh, that's nice. That's, yeah. that's how solar ovens work because the heating part is actually from at the bottom. bottom because the mirrors reflect all the light and that adds the heat right at the bottom. So you're actually cooking from the bottom and then the heat is radiated up top. You know, heat rises to the top, yeah? So, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yes, there are also people that cook, uh, that bake bread inside a pot, a closed pot. And that way it will all uh, look the same, you know, around either the bottom, top and so on, because it's enclosed in a pot. Hmm. Um, we have some customers that do that. Okay, like the Dutch oven kind of thing. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a Dutch oven, yes. Okay, okay, that's good. Good to know. I mean, I only know how the solar ovens work. I've not tried this, so I'm guessing that it'll be similar in concept to that. Yeah, any other questions? What about the risks with uh, fire being, being a fire hazard, the, the, the machine? So is there a fire risk? Is, is it uh, no, <clears throat> absolutely not. There is some fire risks with another type of solar uh, cookers. Um, there are three big families of solar cookers. Box ovens like this one. Then there are parabolic concentrators. We also sell them uh, in a few units. These uh, look like satellite dishes. 
very quite large, one meter, more than one meter diameter. And they concentrate the rays onto a focal point outside of it. So if it's not well focused, they might burn the, 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 the ground uh, in front of it. Okay. So they are with that kind of cookers, uh, one needs to be careful not to uh, start uh, any fire, but not with uh, ovens like ours. And you, the reason is very simple. We only use uh, curved mirrors inside, and curved mirrors are the ones who are concentrating. If the radiation is reflected by a flat mirror, it will be as strong as when it comes from the sun. If there's a, a curved uh, surface, then it will concentrate it into a, into a point or a line. And, and in that case, there's some danger. But that only happens inside the oven and never uh, affects the, the ground uh, outside of it. Cork is a natural fire retardant. It burns without flame and does not emit toxic gases during combustion. That's it. That's it. You, you have been reading about it. <laughs> it, it burns if you, if you put a flame on it with a lighter, for instance. But, uh, but if you take the flame out, it will immediately um, subside. It won't, it won't continue. So, but if you keep the flame on, it will, it will burn. But, but it needs um, an outside source to burn. I used to do um, performing arts. And what we used to do was we used to burn cork and use that as makeup for beards and oh. stuff like that. So it never quite catches fire. And we just paint that on our faces for beards for the men. Yes, yeah. I, I've been in the army, and we use that for um, for night uh, drills. Oh yeah, when we had to uh, <laughs> to look dark. But it's yeah. very it was it was very very hard to uh, to clean it up afterwards. Oh yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> we had to put it all over the face, and uh, and we would do it uh, with the uh, wine stoppers uh, by burning them and and uh, just painting the the face black. So I hope uh, that answers your question. Yes, yeah. it does. Thank you. Okay. So any more questions? Yeah, is there a supplier here in um, Australia? You are located in Australia. Yes. Yes, um, there is a representative in Australia. Yes, it's a very nice um, lady mm -hmm. based in. Uh, is it Sydney, it's not Queensland. London, Queensland. Uh, it's a, it's Sydney region. I think it's Musselbrook. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. uh, up on the countryside, and uh, she's selling there. Uh, she has a website, uh, mm -hmm. and so if you wish, I can uh, put you in touch with her. Uh, maybe if you could uh, send me an email, um, that would be easier, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also wondering if you your company does drop shipping. Yes, yes, we do. We do. Mm -hmm. We we work with uh, TNT and uh, FedEx, mm -hmm. so we can ship everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But prices are competitive in some in some countries and uh, mm -hmm. not very competitive in others. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of requests, for instance, from South Africa, but but um, uh, shipping prices are terrible there. Yeah, um, yeah murder here. But too. we can we can ship everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, okay. the shipping is like murder in a lot of places. In fact, the cost of shipping from Portugal to here is the same as the unit itself. <laughs> so, yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But anyways, um, Nuno and I have been uh, talking about the pricing. So we're going to plan a bit more, and then we'll give you the final price from there. Once we can figure out the cost of customs, then we can give you the finalized price. Yes. In Europe, it's very easy to do drop shipping. Outside of Europe, it's not uh, at all reasonable or economic. And the only way to do it is having some distributor, some local distributor that will be able to um, buy one or two pallets and then to distribute locally. That, that, uh, that lowers the price significantly. All right, thank you. Any more questions? Yes, I, I would like only to say again, because I forgot to, when, men, when mentioning the product, that the, the sometimes includes always a pot and a pan, okay? The prices I gave you, they, they all include these, um, these containers for cooking. And uh, the reason we do that is that the container's characteristics affect the cooking time. So 
uh, this this uh, the, this kind of uh, containers we use are the ideal ones because of three things. One is the color; they are black in order not to reflect the sun's rays outside. The second one is that they have a flat bottom in order to have uh, maximum contact with the bottom plate, which is the hotter part inside the oven. And the other one is that they are very light, as we have lesser energy here than in a normal oven. If you put a very uh, thick material inside, it will take longer to build temperature. Very light vessels contribute for faster cooking. So that's why we, we include those. People then can use whatever they want, whatever containers they want, but they should always keep in mind that it will affect the, the cooking, okay? The cooking time. Are there no more questions? Yeah. May, may I know uh, is the smaller unit three to four person? And the four to five to six unit, the the bigger unit, is it take a similar time for cooking? Uh, yes, there's not much of a difference, because on the larger one you have you have a higher uh, reflective surface, so you are capturing more sun rays, but you also have a bigger compartment. So um, in the end, it's it's more or less the same thing. Yes, so the differences in testing are very very slight. Similar cooking time. How about the weight? What is the weight of the smaller and bigger unit? Oh, the smaller one is nine kilos, nine kilograms, and the bigger one is twelve kilograms. There are yeah. three, three kilos difference. Oh, thank you. I would because say the smaller is much easier to carry around because of the lower weight, uh, but also because it's it's more the width of a person. You know, the other one is already you you have to stretch your arms and then it's not as comfortable. This one is more natural. Some of us quite small sizing. Yes. Oh, but uh, but the, the oven is, is built with the two handles on the sides. I don't know whether you, you saw that. Okay, you can, you can grab it here. So it's easy for two people to carry it, one on each side. You can either carry it alone or do it with two people, one on so each side. If the five to six for five to six people can smaller size housewife carry alone? Yes, I would say so. It's 13 kilos, it's not, not, not very heavy. Uh, it all depends on the distance, okay? If you have to go for a hundred meters with it, you will feel your arms under efforts. But uh, if it's only to take it from uh, the house to the garden, and uh, then it's it's, uh, it's okay, it's uh, not, yeah. not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, then, uh, how about any maintenance or not? Do you do we need to do any maintenance? Maintenance like here that? is cleaning. You know, you need to keep the glass free of dust. That's the first rule, mm. because dust on the glass always you barely see it, but it it will always cut down the the amount of radiation going through. Okay, so you need to clean the dust on the glass and on the mirrors. And then inside, you will notice that there's a lot of condensation inside. Uh, it will be higher when you cook with a pan, for instance, with, without your food covered. It will be lesser if you are cooking with a pot uh, with a lid. But uh, there will always be some condensation inside. So when you end cooking, everything will be wet inside. So we recommend people to use a paper towel or a bit of uh, tissue to um, or cloth to clean the excess of water on the glasses and on the mirrors and on the bottom plates in order to dry it out um, quickly. Because if you leave these things, the, the, the water to, um, to dry out by itself, then there will be some, some uh, marks on the mirrors with time that it will, it will build up. I don't know what's the English word for that. I think it's limestone. Water normally has some limestone and this will adhere to the mirrors. Not a big problem, but it will get uglier. So maintenance here is really cleaning. If you spill anything inside, then you should take out the bottom plates and clean the, the cork underneath the, the other side of the cork the, of the, the bottom plate so that uh, there are no um, no smells inside. Shall we use uh, water to clean or the detergent dishwasher? You, you should use a detergent for the glass, for the inside glass, okay? And you can use water for everything. 
Well, if you clean the oven when it's hot, water will be more than enough, okay? If there's some spillage and you have some grease inside, then some fat inside, then uh, you could use normal detergents. On the glass, on the internal glass, you see that it's, it has an angle. And this angle has been calculated by our, by our physicists uh, so that the water condensation on the glass will slide down through the glass, cleaning it. When condensation builds up inside, you won't be able to see anything inside, okay? Like on a car glass. If there's condensation, you cannot see through it. That's the same here. The, the most important thing here is that you don't need, some people start opening the oven to clean it, and that's uh, no good because you will lose the heat that you, are, you have already built up inside. So. This glass has this inclination, uh, which is at the point where when the condensation grows up and the droplets become bigger, they will slide down the glass and they will clean it. So after a while, you, there, there's a point when cooking where you cannot see anything inside, but after a while, the droplets will start going uh, down through the, to, through, the, um, through the glass and they will clean it up. Okay, this is not a maintenance point, but it's a way of avoiding maintenance. You don't need to open it and so you, you should really leave your food inside and forget it. You can, you can watch it from the outside, but do not intervene, do not open it because you'll be losing heat. Apart from that, I would recommend some regular cleaning. Let uh, the cork be in, uh, with a healthy surface, keep dust away from, from uh, the hinges and so on. That's the most important point. Do we need any yearly or uh, regular maintenance from the factory? Change no, any no, 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 any no. No. I, I always expect customers to give some feedback, send some photos, but uh, we are not supposed to be um, part of it. It's all you and your oven, okay? Any, you won't need us. Warranty period or whatever. Sorry? And warranty. Warranty, yes, yes, one year warranty, okay? Against any manufacturing defects, you are good to go. It's, if, if there's a problem with your oven during the first year, we'll most probably get it replaced. Thanks to you, Nuno, for taking the time out to do this. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you for this opportunity and to get to know all of you. I hope this was uh, enlightening. Yeah, and these units can actually be used for dehydrating food as well. So that's a cool part about it. Like, let's say if you want to keep your vegetables and certain herbs, like herbs and spices for longer, you can stick the vegetables in there, the herbs and spices, and let it completely evaporate all the water by means of heat. And then you can store your herbs and spices. So it's really excellent. If you have fruit and things like that, that you want to dehydrate, you can use these as well. So that's what I like about this unit. Yes. You can, you can leave, you can put it outside and leave the door slightly open. You can even use those swiveling locks. Not here, um, for keeping it slightly open. But the idea would be to, to have something in the back, keeping the door slightly open, and then you place your food inside and it will the, the air will circulate and the interior will be at a temperature higher than 50, 60 degrees Celsius and it will dry out the food, yeah, it will dehydrate it. There's a farm in Australia, there's a lady who has made some videos on how to dehydrate food using this very model. So I can show it to them later. Okay. okay. I've done my homework. You'll be happy to know. I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. Any other questions? I suppose you leave the solar oven outside all the time, but yet you have to protect it from uh, the element, the rain and all that. Do you actually cover it all the time when you are not using it? You leave it outside or do you mm -hmm. once in a yes. while? Yes. 
Yes, I personally don't leave it outside, okay? Because for me, it's very easy to take it inside when I'm not using it, so uh, not really a problem. There are people for whom uh, this is not uh, so easy. Uh, I told you about two customers, two of the first customers that left their ovens for uh, years outside. One of those was a disabled lady. She moved around in a wheelchair so she, she really couldn't uh, be moving around. It's taking it inside and outside regularly. Um, so the solution for her was to, uh, to buy some cover. And there are some covers for barbecues, for instance, that are very adequate for this. I don't know whether you have IKEA. IKEA is a large furniture chain store in Europe and the U.S. Okay, so IKEA has some covers for, for barbecues that uh, fit very well uh, for the sun taste. So that's an alternative. Also, if you want to have a, a special place for it and to keep it always there, then you could cover it. And I understand you have a very aggressive rainy season, uh, mm. don't you? I would advise you to, during the rainy season, not only putting the cover, but try to protect underneath because I understand that the air must be very, very humid and humidity in the air with time, might also start being absorbed a little bit by cork. So um, I would advise you to insulate a little bit. But apart from that, the cover cervicals will do the job of protecting the sun taste, yes. It's good to know that we can get the cover from um, IKEA. Maybe yes, or it, any other store, for instance. But IKEA is, is a good reference for that. This has been great. Does anybody want to ask one last question? No more questions. No more questions. I think we had a very sure. successful session here. Very pleasant for me. Uh, time's up already now. Yeah, definitely very interested in it myself. And I know okay. people here who are very interested. And that's why we well, wanted to do this session. Good. It was nice talking to you all also. Yeah. So no more, and I hope that no more questions. <laughs> Last... wait, wait, wait. Uh, I just want to clarify this. Uh, did you say one part, one of the component is made of uh, aluminum inside? Yes, yes. Uh, which... uh, that's aluminum, uh, this, the mirrors, okay. The mirrors, they're all aluminum, oh. polished aluminum. And then there is the lid, which is a aluminum sheet metal. And then there are some aluminum profiles here. You, you can see here, okay? It's a reinforcements for the oven. So these are all aluminum. So is this safe for cooking? Uh, because- uh, Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, the aluminum part. Yes, there's no contact with, with cooking. What I haven't told you about is that the, the pots, they are aluminum too, okay? But they are all covered in a non-stick material. And non-stick materials sometimes frighten people uh, because there are some carcinogenic uh, materials inside. Ours are uh, free of these components, okay? We take care not to use that. It's called PFOA on our anti-stick coating. Even so, uh, people can use other, other kinds of pots if, if they prefer to.